Hello and welcome back. In this Black Excellence presentation, we will highlight 20 Black architects who shaped the world. Welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we share Black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. Architects beautify and reconceptualize city skylines, devise public spaces that bring art out of galleries and to the masses, and create environmentally conscious structures to preserve our planet's dwindling resources. African Americans were long barred from the architecture profession and have always faced enormous social and economic barriers. Today, African American architects and designers are individual boundary pushers, willing to disrupt convention and welcome the spotlight. And we want to celebrate the number of Black architects who have managed, designed, and constructed some of today's most admired structures. You are driven, intelligent, and unafraid, much like the Black builders who came before you. You are trailblazers in your own ways, leaving your indelible mark on the world for years to come. In this original Black Excellence video, we will be featuring 20 Black architects. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, Norma Sklarek, New York. Once called the Rosa Parks of Architecture by AIA board member Anthony Costello, Harlem-born Norma Merrick Sklarek overcame racism and sexism to become the first licensed Black female architect in New York in 1954 the first black female member of the American Institute of Architecture in 1959, the first licensed black female architect in California in 1962, the first black female fellow of the AIA in 1980, and co-founder of the nation's largest woman-owned architecture firm, Siegel Sklarek Diamond, and the first black woman to co-own an architecture firm in 1985. As an architecture student at Barnard College and Columbia University, she was one of two women and the only black student in her 1950 class, and upon graduation was passed over for several jobs until she landed a role with the Department of Public Services in Los Angeles. She collaborated often with Cesar Pelli on iconic structures, such as the Pacific Design Center and the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo. Her architectural management skills ensured the successful completion of complex projects, such as the Terminal 1 at the Los Angeles International Airport. Number 2. John S. Chase, Texas in 1950, Chase became one of the first two African Americans to enroll in the school's architecture program after the Supreme Court ruled to desegregate professional and graduate schools. Chase went on to become the first black architect to be licensed in Texas and began his own practice after receiving rejections from the white-owned firms in the area. Known for modern designs in democratic public spaces, notably churches, some of Chase's most well-known projects include Riverside National Bank, the first Black-owned banking institution in the state of Texas, the U.S. Embassy in Tunisia, the Martin Luther King Jr. School of Humanities at Texas Southern University, and the Phillips House Residence in East Austin. To promote the work of people of color in architecture and design, Chase co-founded the National Organization of Minority Architects in 1971. Number 3. Harvey Bernard Gant, North Carolina Born in 1943 in Charleston, South Carolina, Harvey B. Gant fused a love of urban planning with the policy decisions of an elected official. He earned a bachelor's degree from Clemson University in 1965 after a federal court sided with him, allowing him to integrate the school as its first black student. He then went on to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, to earn a Master of City Planning degree and later moved to North Carolina to begin his dual career as an architect and politician. Gant's political life also began in North Carolina as he moved from a member of the city council to become the first black mayor of Charlotte. From building the city of Charlotte to becoming mayor of that same city, Gant's life has been filled with victories in both architecture and democratic politics. Number 4. J. Max Bond Jr., California Undoubtedly the most significant black architect in New York during the 20th century, Bond's impact was the result of decades invested in increasing the visibility of black art in history. 
Bond was born in Louisville, Kentucky in 1935 to a family entrenched in communities of higher learning and social activism. He was educated at Harvard University, where he was awarded a bachelor's degree as well as a master's degree. He ignored advice from a Harvard faculty member to give up the professional pursuit of architecture due to his race, overcoming barriers in what was at the time a white profession. Bond would eventually design several government buildings, including the Bogotonga Regional Library. He co-founded the architectural firm of Bond Writer and Associates, which was responsible for the design of the Martin Luther King Jr. Center in Atlanta and the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, as well as Harlem Skomberg Center for Research in Black Culture. Bond was responsible for the museum component at the National September 11 Memorial and Museum at the World Trade Center site at the time of his death. Number five, Robert R. Taylor, North Carolina. Born in Wilmington, North Carolina, a 20-year-old Robert R. Taylor traveled to Boston to sit for the MIT entrance exam, determined to study at the University School of Architecture. Four years after passing the test, he became the first academically trained black architect and the school's first black graduate. Growing up in North Carolina, Taylor worked as a carpenter and foreman for his prosperous father, Henry Taylor, who was the son of a white enslaver and a black woman. During his course of study, he met Booker T. Washington, who later recruited Taylor to lead the industrial program and campus expansion at his Tuskegee Institute, an African-American vocational school in Alabama that is now a designated National Historic Site. Over his lifetime as an educator and architect, Taylor designed more than 25 buildings on the Tuskegee campus, including Washington's own home, as well as libraries, housing, museums, and other academic buildings in North Carolina, South Carolina, Ohio, Arkansas, Mississippi, Virginia, Tennessee, and in Liberia. The architect died suddenly on December 13, 1942, while visiting Tuskegee Chapel in Alabama. In 2015, he was honored by being featured on a stamp issued by the U.S. Postal Service. Number six, Beverly Lorraine Green, Illinois. At 27 years old, architect, engineer, and urban planner Beverly Lorraine Green became the first black female architect licensed in the United States in Illinois in 1942. She started her practice in Chicago with the Chicago Housing Authority. However, when racial prejudice caused her to be often passed over for projects and ignored by the media, she moved to New York City to work, ironically, on the Stuyvesant Town Housing Project. In 1945, it did not allow African Americans to live in its apartments. She would go on to push past further barriers, working with some of the most well-known international modernists on iconic structures, with Edward Durrell Stone on the Sarah Lawrence College Arts Complex and Marcel Brewer on the UNESCO headquarters in Paris. In her final project, she designed several buildings for New York University, but died before she saw their completion. Number seven, John Warren Matusami. Illinois. After graduating from the Illinois Institute of Technology in 1948, where he studied under Mies van der Rohe, John Warren Matusami began a fruitful architecture career in the greater Chicago area. One of Matusami's most high-profile commissions was the headquarters for black publishing titan John H. Johnson's growing media empire, which included Ebony and Jet magazines. Inside the stone-clad structure, colorful walls and psychedelic carpets exuded energy, celebrating black culture and commerce. Today, it remains the only downtown Chicago tower designed by an African American. The city landmark, still known to many as the Johnson Publishing Building, is currently undergoing a conversion into rental apartments, though the emblematic ebony jet signage will remain. Number eight, Moses McKissick III, Tennessee. The grandsons of an African-born enslaved man and trained builder, Moses McKissick III and his brother Calvin followed in family footsteps. After studying architecture via correspondence courses, the Tennessee-born siblings became the first, Moses, and second, Calvin, black architects licensed in their home state in 1922. Together, they formed McKissick & McKissick in Nashville, Tennessee, the nation's first black-owned architecture firm and the oldest still in operation today. 
At first, most of the firm's projects were churches or church-based. However, in 1942, they won a multi-million dollar federal contract to design the Tuskegee Army Airfield, the largest project that had been awarded to a black-owned firm to that date. Today, the family-owned firm is known for its design and construction management, recently for the National Museum of African American History and Culture and the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial, both in Washington, D.C. Number nine, Walter T. Bailey, Illinois. Born in the small town of Kewanee, Illinois, Walter T. Bailey was the first African-American graduate of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign in 1904 and went on to become the first licensed African-American architect in the state. Between 1905 and 1916, Bailey helmed the Mechanical Industries Department at the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama, where he designed several buildings on campus before leaving the university to open his own practice, which focused mostly on commercial projects, churches, and renovations, including contributions to what is currently called the Pleasant Street Historic District. A hub of the African-American community in Hot Springs, Arkansas, Bailey's last major project was the now landmark First Church of Deliverance in Chicago, an unconventional art modern building clad in glazed terracotta, which he completed in 1939. Number 10, Vertner Woodson Tandy, New Jersey. For Lexington, Kentucky-born Vertner Woodson Tandy, design ran in the family. His father was a respected mason whose firm built his hometown courthouse, among other prominent structures. After attending the Chandler School and the Tuskegee Institute, Tandy matriculated into Cornell to study architecture, where he was a founding member of the nation's oldest African-American fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. He would soon become the first black architect registered in New York State, where his landmark structures include the 1910 St. Philip's Episcopal Church in Harlem, the first first black Episcopal church in New York, and the second in the United States, which he designed with his firm partner, George Washington Foster, the first black architect registered in New Jersey. Number 11, Wallace Augustus Rayfield, Alabama. While Wallace Augustus Rayfield was a student at Columbia University, Booker T. Washington recruited him to head the architectural and mechanical drawing department at Tuskegee Institute. Rayfield worked alongside Robert Robinson Taylor in establishing Tuskegee as a training ground for future black architects. After a few years, Rayfield opened his own practice in Birmingham, Alabama, where he designed many homes and churches, most famously the 16th Street Baptist Church in 1911. Rayfield was the second professionally educated black architect in the United States, right behind Taylor. Number 12, William Sidney Pittman, Texas. William Sidney Pittman is thought to be the first black architect to receive a federal contract, the Negro Building at the Jamestown Tercentennial Exposition in Virginia in 1907, and the first black architect to practice in the state of Texas. Like other black architects, Pittman was educated at Tuskegee University. He then went on to study architecture at Drexel Institute in Philadelphia. He received commissions to design several important buildings in Washington, D.C. before moving his family to Texas in 1913. Often reaching for the unexpected in his work, Pittman died penniless in Dallas. Sadly, his architecture in Texas has never been fully recognized or preserved. Number 13, Julian Abil, Philadelphia. Julian Abil was one of America's most important architects, but he never signed his work and was not publicly acknowledged in his lifetime. As the first black graduate of architecture at the University of Pennsylvania in 1902, Abil spent his entire career at the Philadelphia firm of the Gilded Age architect Horace Trumbauer. A bill was working for Trumbauer when they received a commission to expand the campus of Duke University, a whites-only university in Durham, North Carolina. Although Abil was the primary designer of the West Campus of Duke University, and his original architectural drawings for Duke University have been described as works of art, it wasn't until the 1980s that Abil's efforts have been acknowledged at Duke. Today, a bill is celebrated on campus, and in 2016, the university renamed the campus quad after the influential architect. 
Number 14, Clarence W. Cap Wigington, Nebraska. Cap Wesley Wigington was the first registered black architect in Minnesota and the first black municipal architect in the United States. Born in Kansas, Wigington was raised in Omaha, where he served as an apprentice under Thomas Kimball, a renowned local architect and future AIA president. At about age 30, he moved to St. Paul, Minnesota, took a civil service test, and was hired to be the city's staff architect. He designed schools, fire stations, park structures, municipal buildings, and other important landmarks that still stand in St. Paul. The pavilion he designed for Harriet Island is now called the Wigington Pavilion. Wigington's lasting legacy remains, with nearly 60 buildings still standing. Number 15. John Edmonston Brent, New York. John Edmonston Brent was the first black professional architect in Buffalo, New York. His father, Calvin Brent, was the son of an enslaved person and was himself the first black architect in Washington, D.C., where John was born. John Brent was educated at Tuskegee Institute and received his architecture degree from Drexel Institute in Philadelphia. He is well known for designing Buffalo's Michigan Avenue YMCA, a building that became a cultural center for the black community in the city. Number 16, Louis Arnett Stewart Bellinger, Pennsylvania. Born in South Carolina, Louis Arnett Stewart Bellinger earned a Bachelor of Science degree in 1914 from the historically black Howard University in Washington, D.C. For more than a quarter of a century, Bellinger designed key buildings in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, only a handful of his buildings have survived, and all have been altered. His most important work was the Grand Lodge for the Knights of Pythias in 1928, which became financially unsustainable after the Great Depression. In 1937, it was remodeled to become the new Granada Theater. Number 17, Paul Revere Williams, California. Paul Revere Williams became renowned for designing major buildings in Southern California, including the Space Age LAX theme building at the Los Angeles International Airport and over 2,000 celebrities homes in the hills throughout Los Angeles. Many of the most beautiful residences in Hollywood were created by Paul Williams as he defined the spaces that comprised the aesthetic of Hollywood glamour, which spread across the country. Despite the countless barriers Williams faced due to the color of his skin, he remained steadfast and determined as an architect. He even learned how to draw upside down so he could position himself across the table from white clients who were uncomfortable sitting next to him when reviewing plans. One of the most well-known black architects and known as the architect to the stars, Paul Revere Williams' 50-year career and over 2,000 design homes has played a major role in shaping Southern California's signature architectural style. His work is distinguished by a mix of styles and types, from hotels and restaurants to churches and hospitals. Williams studied architecture at the Bow Arts Institute of Design and trained at several prominent Los Angeles firms before starting his own practice. He became the first black member of the American Institute of Architects in 1923, and in 2017, Williams was posthumously awarded the AIA Gold Medal. Number 18. Albert Irvin Castle, Washington, D.C. Albert Irvin Castle shaped many academic sites in the United States. He designed buildings for Howard University in Washington, D.C., Morgan State University in Baltimore, and Virginia Union University in Richmond. Castle also designed and built civic structures for the state of Maryland and the District of Columbia. As his final project, Castle sought to develop Chesapeake Heights on the Bay, a 520-acre summer resort community for African Americans in Prince Frederick, Calvert County, Maryland. The project was to feature houses, a motel, shopping centers, a pier, a marina, beaches, and a clubhouse fronting the Chesapeake Bay. Roads and a few homes were built by 1969, but the project ended with Castle's death in that same year. Number 19, Robert Trainham Coles, New York. Robert Trainham Coles is noted for designing on a grand scale. His works include the Frank Reeves Municipal Center in Washington, D.C., the Ambulatory Care Project for Harlem Hospital, the Frank E. Merriweather Library, the Johnny B. Wiley Sports Pavilion in Buffalo, and the Alumni Arena at the University of Buffalo. 
Founded in 1963, Cole's architecture firm ranks as one of the oldest in the Northeast, owned by a Black American. Robert T. Coles faced many obstacles in starting his career. Despite being discouraged from considering the profession by his high school teachers, and despite being the only African American in his class at the University of Minnesota, Coles was not deterred and went on to have a successful architectural career. After graduating from MIT and returning from his traveling fellowship in Europe, Coles worked for multiple reputable architecture firms before opening his own practice in 1963. His his first project was the commission of his thesis project, the Ellicott District Recreation Center, known today as the John F. Kennedy Recreation Center by the city of Buffalo. Community engagement became a crux of Cole's career, and he continued to pursue diversity, inclusion, and equity in his work. Coles was also an outspoken critic of the field of architecture, advocating for better equality, access, and opportunities for women and minority practitioners. Number 20, Roberta Washington, New York. Established in 1983, Washington's firm is driven by an architectural approach guided by choice in how we live, learn, heal, and connect the past to the future. Working on projects that range from affordable housing, educational, cultural, and healthcare, Roberta Washington Architects is one of the few African-American women-owned architectural firms in the country. Washington has had a multifaceted career, working internationally as a designer in Maputo, Mozambique, and serving as past president of the National Organization of Minority Architects, and is currently a Center for Architecture Foundation board member. She was made a fellow of the American Institute of Architects in 2006 in recognition for her wide-ranging, impactful career. We appreciate the fact that you stayed with us until the end. Thank you for spending time with us and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.